Could now I ask, ask your uh, question, Tom? When you're, in, I, pres uh, I think that when you're in interviewing banks, it's to know which banks you can potentially work with, so that you can That's go. Part of it, yeah. So that you can go, then go out and and find deals. In this case, you have a deal. Yeah, he has a deal. Yeah, he has a deal. Well, so, now in the begin in the beginning, what he would have done. And by the way, for the uh, benefit of the uh, YouTubers. Uh, we just had a role play. We're ending the role play of a guy that is uh, pitching a financial institution uh, for a uh, quasi oil, oil and gas uh, uh, service company that provides uh, 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 equipment, uh, and he wants to buy a company. Uh, and uh, we just went through the questions, uh, and Pablo brings up, and rightfully so, well, when he, when uh, we have already. Uh, been to other financial institutions practicing. The qu answer is yes. You practice, he sent an uh, executive summary with the chairman, the dream team listed, with your accountants and the lawyers, which we'll get in later in the seminar, which is in all my, uh, the book, which is on my uh, website and all the, the free stuff. You send it to them because you want to you wanna practice giving the presentation before you have a deal. And you say, this is our idea. You don't, have a, you don't have a firm commitment. You don't have a company in mind. This is our idea. He would have made a few of those kinds of presentations practicing before he comes to see the guy with actual numbers like, mm -hmm. he's, like he did, we, we just did. So you practice. And I tell people, just like um, um, Jamie, who you know, he practiced. He's, he's, in, he's in San Francisco. He practiced with accounting firms and, you know, 70 miles away. So if you fuck something up, you know, and, and as he's getting better with the presentation, he's moving closer to San Francisco, where he's going to do it. The same thing with financial institutions. I mean, he's moving closer. But you practice, because I don't care how slick you think you are, or how experienced you think you are, you're not. <laughs> I don't care, you know, uh, how much money you've raised, how much money you've made, you're not. You're not. Well, if they ask for projections, two or three year pro projections, and they ask for a history of the revenues, you know, five or X, X amount of years back, how are you going to get that from the company you're planning to buy? Well, he's already, he already has the numbers, presumably. He already knows the numbers. That's why you, you, can't, give him, you can't give him numbers going historically unless you already got them. You're not making them up. So he's out actually got him. He's, you know, it's like Jamie's got this company that um, I told you about last night, where um, he's trying to he's trying to buy, and he's got their tax returns. When people can start giving you a fucking tax returns, you're serious, okay? And until I see a tax return, and I I have my uh, my accounts called the fucking IRS. I want to know if these are legitimate numbers. Is there a file? They won't tell you that. Is there a file? X, Y, three, two, seven, nine, or D. Yeah. That's all I want to know. So no, you... Bullshit. Okay, wait. And in some countries, you can get, pull all this shit up on the internet. Unbelievable. So you make the purchase or the deal subject to you being able to secure the... Uh, no, no, you, you know, the subject... All deals are subject to due diligence. Those should be magic words in your little pea brains. YouTubers... Subject, everything we buy here is subject to due diligence. And that's not a dildo for you uh, uh, sex freaks. Due diligence. You make that very clear in your letters and all your fucking correspondence. Subject to motherfucking due diligence. And that means all things to all people. I know what it means to me. Get the money. Yeah, well, exactly. Well... Your due diligence is really subject to the fucking money. But, you know, how can I finance your business, Pablo, and buy it from you? And you and your wife that's got Alzheimer's and emphysema and spitting up blood, unless I know what the numbers are, how can I finance it? I can't. Or as they say here, I can't. I can't do it. So, and, and, but it's subject to due diligence. Of course, I'll sign a non-disclosure, I'll sign a non-confidentiality -confiden and whatever all that shit you sign. Now, you can count the confidentiality agreements and the non-disclosure agreements. I've In 46 years, you can count the number of... How many times do you think I've signed them? Thousands. Less than 10. Less than 10. They trust you. Fucking right they do. 
I wouldn't trust you and fucking an anorexic as far as I could fucking throw your skinny bodies. Less than 10 in 45 years. And Robert, how many deals have I been involved in? More than 700. So what does that say? 1%. And I, I, I haven't signed, I've signed less than 10 letter of intents too. Because when you come in with Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, you got food again, okay. Uh, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, PricewaterhouseCoopers, O'Melveny and Myers, they don't ask for that shit. You come in with your, your tail between your legs like this, you know, begging on your knees, and that's why they ask for all this shit. You come in like you own the fucking place. And I, that's easy for me to do. But I've been like this for a long, long, long time. I just didn't discover this persona. I've looked like this a long, a long time. Like I told you earlier, I'm wearing the same suits I had Taylor made 30 years ago. Other than now, I used to worry about looking young. Well, that's not my problem now. <laughs> I actually used to look young. I know nobody believes me, but if you look at pictures, if you look at the pictures of me back from 30 years ago when I was doing deals on, outside my walls, I mean, I used to look young. I grew a mustache and a beard to look old. And then the beard turned white all of a sudden. What the fuck? You know? And I used to have hair his color. Fuck, what happened? That's fucking, that's what happens when you get old. I don't feel old, but I certainly look a lot older than I did. But we were on this in the safari with this a big hitter who was the retired CEO of Toys R Us. Is that a company, Toys R Us? Mm -hmm. I had a good looking fucking wife. And he's about 80, maybe. And his wife says, well, how old are you? And I said, I'll be 70 next year. And she goes, you don't look 70. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sally walks in. <laughs> Sally, you gotta, you know, why don't you give me a drink? Give me a glass of wine over there. <laughs> you don't look 70. But, uh, but yeah. So, but getting back to what I was saying, the perception is reality. And that's why, you know, Jamie, to his credit, the little, little shit, why I, I, had, I had doubts whether he was going to be able to get, and Jamie, I hope you're watching this, but he, like a, like a fucking turtle, I'm like, da, da, da. And he asked me to be his chairman just in the last six weeks. He got his whole board together. Then he asked me, and he had a list of potential, oh, we still need a chairman, Jamie. He had a list of potential chairmen and his three big hitters. He tried to get T. Boone Pickens. Jeez. And T. Boone answered his mail and letter. He's very proud of that. Okay. And then I'm last on the list. And I go, I, I emailed him. I says, is this your Yale fucking Ivy League way of asking me to be your chairman? He says, yes. He says, but I, I was embarrassed. I wanted to show you that I could get a board even without you. But I want you to be the chairman. I said, okay, I'll be your chairman. And so, uh, the, uh, but he's got some good people on the fucking board. And I added one more person on the board who's a friend of mine I've known for 40 plus years, an ex Bear Stearns guy, a great guy on the board, in addition to the board that we already have. And then, but then he told somebody, a deal fell into my lap. I said, that's not, I hope you're watching this, Jim. You don't tell people a deal fell into your lap by serendipity. Hard work, you fucking idiot. That's how the deal, we got the deal. Not a deal fell into your fucking lap. What do you think, you know, an angel dropped it on you or something? Well, I says, oh, okay. So, mm, scratches that out and he says, hard work, we found a deal. You don't tell the other board members, you know, we're not lying to them, but you don't say a deal fell into our lap. It looks pretty good. You can say Dan likes it, which I do. But I mean, you got to be careful with what you, the words you use, because we don't, we don't want to mislead anybody. That's the last thing, because that always comes back to bite you, okay? 
But when you have a little good fortune, you don't, you know, the luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So, um, so you know, preparation met opportunity. And so we, we got our first deal on the boil. What and business was that? What? what He's in the um, hospital administration, hospital administration, records. Hospital administration records, keeping the records. Yeah. And that's not his background. But he was looking for something, he wanted to do something else. And so he likes health care, and hospital administration is part of health care. And, you know, and we're, we're off and running. The same thing with. Um, so he never pitched for money? What? He never. Uh, had experience pitching for money? Nope. None. He's 52. Yaley, Columbia, MBA. Smart, smart guy. Quiet. Smart, dope. Very smart. But, uh, you know, it, uh, he's looking for a change of life at 52. And the other 52 year old, which was Jerry, who's a Canadian guy. I hope you're watching Jerry. I mean, he's making good progress. He got the chairman right away, not me, somebody else. Then he's had some a little getting other people, and now he's back. He's on track because he's he's doing a couple things that I've uh, suggested that he do, and um, he's on track. And and you know, some everybody does a different pace. The one thing I've learned in 21 years of doing this is everybody does it different. I used to think I used to put out these marching orders and and I used to get upset when they didn't do it or they couldn't do it and you know some people don't have never picked up a phone to make a call that have come to this seminar let alone I mean a cold call mm -hmm. cold that you don't know the guy or the gal we got people that have done that and when you, when, I mean, that's a big, I thought everybody in the world had made a cold call before. And uh, the, uh, especially me, close ratio of 95.6%. I sold everybody, uh, you know, you walk into an elevator, I sold a motherfucker. I get in a cab, you want to share a cab with me, you're buying, asshole, or get out of the cab. You know, you know yeah. and I used to approach, unfortunately, Sounds, it sounds sexist. I used to approach my relationships, this is when I was a young guy, with women the same way, you know. You know, you want to fuck me now or you want to fuck me later, sweetheart? But you're going to fuck me. Or get out of the car. Sounds awful. But that's, 40 years ago, that's how it was. Pre-AIDS, 60s. And for those of you that are watching from the 60s, you know fucking right it was. Women running around with no bras. No, I mean, that's not all they weren't wearing, too. But that's a day gone by. But I'm a product of that environment. I'm a product of that social and economic milieu. And most, you know, a lot of the things I say are, sound uncouth, and they are uncouth, but that was a product of the times. And everybody was doing it. Now, I'm one of the old Neanderthals is still around, and, you know, the, 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 my aggressiveness and my assertiveness and my positiveness rubs off and people want to do business with me. It's that simple. And what you want on your board are the same kind of people. And Jamie, even though I'm the last guy to be on the board, I mean, Jamie has found some really high profile people, some good people. And, um, and so, but the name of the game is Mentor Dream Team. And the, other, the rest falls into place. Mentor, dream team, and the rest falls into place, and passion. And you get the mentor and dream team with your passion, and that will translate uh, into uh, success with financial institutions. But the first few um, uh, presentations you're going to make aren't going to be that good, unless you're really fortunate. I tell a story, because, and this will, yeah, one story. Okay, one question. Go ahead, Pablo. What happens if you go into a perfunctory kind of meeting like this and you find yourself getting on the defensive or they start a barrage of questions? You just kind of put them in their place? No, 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 just say, okay, I'll say this now, okay. Where, in the interviewing process, we're looking for a new banking relationship, 
currently our bank uh, gives us uh, little or no service. We deposit money and that's it. We're looking for a new relationship, a full service relationship. We're looking for loans to the uh, directors. We're looking for mortgages. We're looking for cars, loans, etc. Okay, and uh, you know uh, HSBC or Barclays or Bank of America. You know you're one of the main banks, and we would rather be with the main uh, uh, bank. Uh, and I normally would ask the guy, what, what? By the way, do you know what your uh, I'd like to know what your bank lending limit is. We're going to get all of this, okay. What's your bank lending limit is? No loan officer you will ever talk to will know what their bank lending limit is. And then if he, if he makes a guess or if he's honest with you, he'll say, well, I don't know, I have to check. But it's normally 1% secured of their asset base of the bank is their lending limit for any one transaction. And then you ask, well, that's nice. Well, what's your personal lending limit? And they're on their back foot. Does everybody understand what it means on their back foot? You're knocking them off balance. Well, and some of these dipshits won't even know the personal lending limit. And then they, and then you also say, do you man, do you make credit decisions by committee or individually? You want individually, not committee. Okay. And, but if it is a committee, you want all the cocksuckers that make the decision in the fucking meeting. So you don't have to get the presentation four, five, eight times. Yes. Now, as a new one for this one, how you would convince all of them to be set on the same time to make a decision now? Well, no, the, well, the, the, the first, no, no, the first introductory meeting. This is this. You're just sitting there, you know, you know, uh, foreplay. This first meeting, you ain't gonna have when you come back for the kill. You want, you tell him, you know, if, if, you know, if his credit limit he can make, he's got enough credit authority to make the loan, then that's fine. You just want him, you know, you know, make sure you get him before or after prayers, before or after prayers, not in between, and you're fine. So the um, story, many years ago, I had a partner named Dave, uh, and um, we had a great little model, uh, and uh, we were in the publishing business. This is before internet, you know, and um, the uh, he made a presentation to um, uh, a uh, venture capital fund in uh, Century City, and I couldn't be there, so I'm on the phone, and we were asking for three or four million dollars, as I recall. I don't remember exactly. I'm on the phone, I'm, uh, and I couldn't be there, and I, he's calling me, and. Uh, and I said, how'd it go? He said, oh, it went great, Dan, great. What happened? He said, they said yes. This is the first presentation, I believe, that he made on by himself. And it might have been the first presentation he made. I don't remember that part. And uh, he said, uh, but I turned it down. Now, the people that were with me said that I gripped the phone, the, the phone that's in the wall, and my, my knees got wobbly, and I started to collapse, you know? Uh, what? What do you mean you turned it down? He says, yeah, I thought since it's so easy, the first presentation, I knocked it for a grand slam home run, that I ought to be able to get a better deal the second time I make a presentation. <laughs> I, almost, I almost died from a stroke. A year goes by, a year plus, we didn't raise any money, then finally I, put, I took part of the, uh, the next presentation and then you I had to let him work it out himself and when you fall off the horse you got to get back on the horse and so then we, we raised the money in I think uh, Ohio or someplace in a personal uh, uh, presentation I made but the interesting when he got up to go to the bathroom the the, the lending guy asked me he says uh, we like the deal we like you uh, but if we have to pull the tr if, if you have no if we think you have to pull the trigger who's going to pull the trigger on the management other than me the CEO, the CFO, and uh, I said, I will. Okay, then when the CFO came back from the toilet before the other guy, and he asked the CFO the same question, and the CFO says, sure, oh, I can pull the trigger on him. Because that's what they want to hear. You know, they're, you know, they're putting the faith that I made the judgment call, a good judgment call, but if I made a bad judgment call, who's going to blow the guy out? And you got to be willing to do that, you know. So what I was saying in an indirect way, 
if I made a mistake, okay, we'll get somebody else. But I've, I've never bailed on a deal. I've never, you know, I've never had, I've never really had to do that, even though I've been willing to do it. Um, but um, okay, this was the first good attempt. We're going to get better at role playing, and the reason why we're starting this early with role play is because we're going to have some, you know, something for you guys to take home that we're going to film the last few days. When do they get here? Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday afternoon. Uh, and um, you'll, uh, and even if it's not you on the, the film, I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable what a great training tool it is for you to be able to look at it. Of course, I say this slightly tongue in cheek, you won't have guys as slick and smooth as these two all the time. You know, these bon vivant raconteur, you know, these guys, Lord Olivier types doing it, you know. But you ask questions like a fucking lawyer. Is that a compliment? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you know, you Probably can't. Well. Okay, okay, well, fine. But you, you can't shake the fact that you're a lawyer. Right? That's good. A solicitor. That's right. A solicitor. Yeah. Anyway, he sounds like one the way he asks questions. He did well. <laughs> yeah, he did well. He did well. Yes, you know. Uh, okay. Okay. Any questions before we wrap it up today? Okay. Pop you said, obviously, you don't want us doing and getting involved in the spreadsheeting. Not in the all. first meeting, no. No, I mean, uh, as far as the preparation of the documents that we would eventually give them. Who in your on your team? Would well, I mean, you should have a, a guy, a part of the dream team, who's a uh, uh, your finance director, your accountant, CFO, whatever you want to call him. Okay, but I mean, spreadsheets aren't that hard. I've done one a long time, but they're just not that fucking hard. I mean, a monkey, every monkey watching on YouTube. Well, I won't say every monkey, but most monkeys watching on YouTube can do a goddamn spreadsheet. Are you talking about the financial statements? Yeah, I mean, they're simple. Um, yeah, um, I got a, a question regarding. Like the practicing, so you, is it that you were going to smaller banks and like ones you're okay with messing around with, and then you, correct? Okay. You practice. Make all mistakes there. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <coughs> um, and then I mean, you know, like when uh, Governor Kerry called the CEO of Citibank for me, you know, I was already a seasoned, polished son of a bitch at giving presentations. So Hugh didn't, because I asked you, you know, uh, Governor, do you want to come with me to the meeting? He said, oh, shit. I mean, you're, you're slick as baby shit. That's why I got to say, slick as baby shit, you don't need to be there. But if there's any problem, just remind Walt who saved New York City and their bank by floating a big bond issue. Mm. There's karma, guys. Just like the guy that called me on New Year's Eve to offer me a deal that I paid for and had more money in the bank than I paid him, the company that I bought. The guys that you're hanging with, chilling with, whatever the word is, you're not going to get that done. Just not. And to get to that position, you have to kiss a lot of frogs. Like, tomorrow I'm going to wear my frog cufflinks instead of these $100,000 ones. That's why these 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 um, ties I wear remind me. And a lot of times I met with you know eight or ten people on this holiday I took to uh, Russia and uh, Scandinavia. I met with guys from all the Scandinavian countries. Um, I got one good idea from the five or six kids that I met with, and they're all kids to me, whether they're forty-five or twenty-five. But and you get and I got a great idea from a kid that came up from Edinburgh. To meet me uh, before I went on the holiday, he drove up here, uh, and he said something that just like a light bulb went off in my head. Um, and uh, you keep talking, even dipshit kids, even idiots, you know. And and that's why, and the reason I like to talk to all these kids is because I, I want to. My view of the world is different. My view of the world is sixty thousand feet. I'm flying up in the Concorde. Your view of the world is down in the trenches. Okay? Beating it out. Okay? And the kids come up with good ideas. They just do. They just do. And so that's why I meet as many as I can. And sometimes it's a pain in the ass. And like I put in my newsletter, I'd be disingenuous if I didn't tell you it's a pain in the ass sometimes to meet these fuckers. It is. It's inconvenient. I want to be late for dinner. Blah. You know, uh, you know. Plus, I, c I continue to have my Zoom 
conference calls when I'm on holiday. Twice a fucking week. You cocksuckers wouldn't take an, two hours out twice a week when you're on a cruise ship going through the Mediterranean to talk to some other dipshits. You wouldn't do it. I do it. Of course, I live here and you live in some fucking squalor someplace. And some of you are as old, if not older, than I was before I moved here. Because I've always been that way. I've always given time. I've always given time. Because you learn. And that's, you know, I'm 130 when we get to that chart. Uh, we've got to make sure we film that, Megan. I'm 131 and a half years old. Based on the hours I've worked for 50 years. You add up 15, eight hours, 15 to 18 hours a day for 50 years, it's a lot of fucking hours. You divide it by 24. And I know guys that work longer hours than I did. Now, I work less now. I only work 50, 60 hours, sometimes 70 hours a week now. I'm cut back considerably. And when I'm on holiday, I probably only work 30 hours a week. But you average all that in because I'm on the internet for four or five hours a day. My biggest challenge is getting bandwidth on when you're in the middle of the fucking ocean. Because the bandwidth, you know, isn't that... You can make a phone call and you can Skype fuck without a picture, but I want to see the fucker's face. You know, it's much easier... It's much harder to be disingenuous with me when I'm looking at your fucking face. Or give me some bullshit answer. Some consultant answer. And that's why we have the, the Zoom calls monthly. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thanks Megan.